So my name is Kaz, welcome to my last Mind and Body class today. There will be Mind and Body next week and the week after that will be covered by other people because I'm working weekends or not here. Um, but for me, this is my last one. Um, so thanks ever so much. You'll be able to obviously find us on the YouTube channel because we work for Christchurch alongside our parks and we give you loads of other classes. So just check on the website um, for all the different classes that we do. You just need a mat. We're going to do some yin yoga today. We're going to start off with some nice yoga sun cells. So just a little bit of a pulse raiser. Nice little hang your head for our ragdoll stance, get the oxygen to our brain. And then we're going to do some poses where we hopefully lengthen and strengthen the muscle. So, just start at the end of your mat in our mountain pose in a nice sort of hip distance with your feet apart. And we're going to roll down nice and slowly. Let me just check something. My chap. Great top. Oh, thanks, Jess. <laughs> So we're going to roll down nice and slowly. We bring our chin to our chest and we start coming down here. Hang your head really heavy. Use the weight of your arms so we don't need to straighten our legs. We're not necessarily doing a hamstring stretch. Like a little tiny bend in the knee is fine. Grab onto your elbows and do a nice little rock to the side and to the other side for our ragdoll stance. So inversions are really good, but if you have things like high blood pressure and stuff like that, because basically the blood runs straight to your brain, it is good because it activates your rest and digest system, but you don't want to do it for too long. This isn't a yin yoga pose I would ever use because I think you hang yourself upside down a little bit too long. But just for now, the heart doesn't have to work as hard because the blood's going down, it uses gravity. Have your hands on the floor and start to walk yourself into our downward facing dog. So we push back, lift the hips high. And when sometimes people say oh, hips high, you think, well, how am I going to do that? I'm going to get on my tiptoes. No. When I say hips high, you guys know, push your chest towards your thighs. And all that does, it gives you a little bit more of like a, a bend so that naturally your hips do go higher into the air. So you can have your heels down if you're flexible, if your hamstrings are loose today, just give them a little walk out. So heel down, heel up. We don't want to be really, really stretching that hamstring because this is going to be nice and chilled. And then we're going to move on to the extensions and stretching. Roll into your plank. So we just shift our weight forward, bringing our shoulders over to our elbows. And we're in this nice, strong plank. Try not to hold your breath. Bring your knees down. We won't stay in there for very long. The tops of your feet onto the floor. And you're going to lower yourself down really gently by pushing your elbows back, lowering yourself. Use your triceps. Come all the way down so that your chest just hovers off the floor and lift up as far as your belly button, but we don't lift up and straighten our arms unless we are lifting our thighs off the floor. So this is an upward facing dog, but you lift your thighs off the floor by putting pressure on the top of that foot and pushing through the hands. If your thighs are on the floor and you have straight arms, that's a proper, proper extreme back extension, which you don't need. So we bend our elbows, we tuck them in, tuck them in, look forward, our sphinx or our cobra. Curl your toes under, push back into your downward facing dog. Pushing those hips high by pushing that chest towards the thigh. You're gonna bring your right foot up in the air, nice and strong with that balance. And then you're going to sweep it underneath, bringing that foot in between your hands. So any time that we sweep forward with that foot, we can always help it. We can grab it and push it forward, get set up. We're in a really nice, strong lunge. Bring that back leg in. Feet together. 
We're back in that nice forward fold. We slowly roll up. And we start back in our mountain pose. We're going to extend to the ceiling, lift up nice and strong. We're going to turn our palms out to face the walls or the windows. And as you do that, you tip from the hip and you fold back down. Hang that head heavy. Tiny bend in the knee if you need it. You're going to take your right foot back and your left foot back and hold that nice, strong plank. So we're not pushing into our downward dog. We're just pushing into a nice, strong plank. Hold it there. One more breath. Knees down, flats of the feet on the floor, squeeze down. Really slow. Don't put your chest on the floor. Use your arms to hold you up. We push up. We keep our elbows tucked in. Little back extension. If we want a full on, lift your thighs off the floor, pushing through your hands. Upward facing dog. Curl your toes under, push back. Your right foot comes in between your hands. Sweep it in. So the same foot as we had before. Left foot comes in, feet are together. We roll up. So I've bookended this sun salutation. So roll up nice and slowly. Fingertips to the ceiling. Don't mind me, my mic pack just fell off there. And we fold. Left foot steps back, right foot steps back. As far as you can go, remember, coming into this nice, strong plank. Hold, chest and eye gaze looking down. Hold that strength, knees down, flats of the feet. Or if you can do your um, Chaturanga Dandasana, so if you can do like your tricep push up, stay on your toes and lower yourself down, then you would push all the way up into your upward facing dog or your cobra. So it's a tricep push up. Try to get as close to the floor as you can without putting your knees down. Puts pressure on your shoulders, which is why I can't seem to do so much anymore. Curl your toes under, push back. You're gonna sweep that leg in for your lunge. Bring the right leg in and hang heavy in that forward fold. And then roll up nice and slowly and reach up to the ceiling. So we're going to bookend with what we did before. So we're going to roll down, roll down, step your left foot back into your downward facing dog. Downward facing dog this time. You're going to lift your left leg up in the air. Sweep it underneath for your lunge. Bring in that back leg. And hang in your ragdoll stance. Forward fold. Hanging onto your elbows. So we started this way at the end of our mat with our right leg. We finish at the beginning in our left leg. Roll up nice and slowly. Okay, so we're going to do a standing yin yoga. Yin yoga is primarily on the floor, but I've decided to mix it up today and add a bit of balance in because we can. So we're going to have our tree pose. We're going to work on our tree pose. We're going to try and give eye closing a go as well. So there's three different ways you can come into your um, tree pose. Please take um, the option that's appropriate for you. So we can have our big toe on the floor and just rest our foot next to our leg. 
That's absolutely perfect. Your hands will be at your heart center. Your second option is where your foot is next to your calf. I'm going to come up nice and close. It's next to your calf. So you have a little arch in your foot, putting it on your knee joint. All that seems like it's a puzzle and that would be lovely, but it is the worst place you can possibly put it. OK, so you've got this like knobbly bit, haven't you? And you're like, oh, hook it on. That's going to keep me balanced. Lovely. Takes away from the balance that you're actually trying to achieve. And also it pushes on the knee joint. So please don't hook onto that little bit of knee. It's calf, it's toe or it's groin. And we go for that by not looking at anyone that's moving. Don't look at me. Focus on something that's still come off the mat. If you're on something that's a, sort of a rough surface, Find a flat surface if you can. Your hands are at your heart center. We're aiming to open our hips. So we do whatever way we do it, if we do big toe, as you can see, my hips out, calf, my hips out, groin, your hips out. So as long as you're taking it wide, that's all we need to achieve. So you're just going to hold it for a couple more breaths and you're going to try and close your eyes if you can. Now, this means like closing your eyelids as slowly as if you were sleeping rather than just banging them shut because you need that stability to keep you balanced. Breathe through it. So again, don't look at anyone that's wobbling. It's a struggle for me to find my balance today. Come on, Karen. Nice and slow. Hands at your heart center, elbows out for a bit of balance. Hold on nice and strong. Attempt to close your eyes if you can. Breathe strong. And swap it over to the other side. So set it up. You might be a little bit more flexible in the hip opener. If I've got any boys, I've got a couple of initials. So I don't know if you're boys behind your cameras, but this is always going to be a little bit harder for you, only because we have childbearing hips as ladies. Um, unless you're a really flexible bloke, then it's so much easier. But if this is where you are going and you've opened your hips as wide as possible, perfect. That's all we want. So into your groin, on your calf, toe on the floor next to your foot. Three options, don't plug it onto your knee. You set yourself up, you find your balance, you find the rhythm of your breath. Breathing in all the way to the belly. It's a slow breath, we're not hyperventilating that breath, we're not laterally breathing, we're trying to have as little movement with the chest as we can. We brew through the belly and we breathe out through our nose if we can. Our hands are at our heart center, elbows out for a little bit of balance. And in your own time, if you can, attempt to close your eyes. Excellent. Excellent. Easy said than done that, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So that was our little bit of yin balance. Now we're going to come into our lunge pose. So this is going to work our stretch our quads, stretch our hamstrings, those hip flexors. So just come into a nice kneeling position. Make sure that your hips are over your knees and you're going to take your right leg forward. Take your right leg forward, so much so that you've got like a nice 90 degree angle underneath your knee and you're going to lean forward. So we want the stretch along the quad at the back here for that hip flexor. It also is a nice little stretch for the hamstring here at the front, for the quads at the front. You can have your hands on resting on your thigh or you can just have them very, very lightly touching so that you're really putting all the weight and using the strength of your muscles 
and just the balance basically if you're able to do it without just sort of really leaning here make sure you're going to be here for maybe 60 more seconds 90 seconds possibly make sure the reason why we set it up where we set it up making sure that our hips are over our knees is so that we aren't in line here and we're wobbling all over the place we want a gap between our legs when we do our lunge so that we've got that balance so we set it up properly hands on your knee or really grip on if you need that balance eye focused forward your drishti leaning in you should feel it in the back so make sure as i showed you from the side that you've actually pushed your hips and your pelvis forward so we're not sitting like this with that 90 degree underneath at the back we're forward hold it here for a little bit more one more big breath and swap it over so you're back to your knees back to your knees if this isn't very comfy on your knees use a cushion use something underneath if you're like well you could have said that before if it hurts then i always say stop don't i we don't want things hurting so just use a little bit of um cushion if you need to setting it up got a nice distance hip width distance take the left leg forward as far forward as you've got that nice 90 degree angle underneath and we're going to shift forward so a light touch if you've got that strength and the balance it's just somewhere to put your hands yeah rather than hang them down here or grip onto them if you need that for sturdying you to keeping you um up nice and strong we're focusing on that back leg but obviously we're putting a hell of a lot of weight on this front leg because this is where it's all gone to so that you can feel nice tight quads but like actually touch like you can go to that bum cheek and be like oh yeah that's hard that's the glutes that's that strong massive muscle that you call your bum cheek yeah it's in there and it's big and it should be hard right now if you are pushing forward enough this leg nice and tight this one at the back here you should feel that again nice and tight make sure you can feel it in the places that it needs to be working lifting up strong your chest is up rather than leaning forward a few more breaths here eye gaze is forward this is a really good hip opener yeah really good sort of for the hip flexors one more big breath and sit back oh we're gonna do a nice little easy one in between each one that's a little bit more strength required for so we're sitting onto our heels we're going to come into our child's pose this is a great child's pose resting pose whatever you want to call it we can lift something up if we are coming right down here and our bottoms well away from our heels we can pop a blanket underneath cushion underneath block underneath whatever you've got otherwise if you can sit right back onto your heels have your head on the mat you can have your arms behind you into a traditional child's pose or if you feel a little bit easier with your arms out in front of you for an extended child's pose do that and if you're really struggling again and your bottom's off and it's not comfy you can do your one potato two potato which i tell you about which stacking your fists on top of each other somewhere for you to rest your head that's a little bit higher that creates a nice line from the top of the neck to run down to the bottom we're just going to be here for a little bit to really counter pose so this is a proper bit of flexion this is a bit of bending forward for those hip flexors that we've just extended and opened yeah we move those big poses into a nice comfy counter pose breathing in through our nose and out through our nose if we can when we shut off a bit more yeah when your belly's not got as much place to go because it's tucked up onto your thighs then we just need to slow our breath down and really make sure we're taking it all in pushing out our belly as much as we can
so this gives you loads of time to really focus on your breath, a bit of reflection. Obviously in yoga, it's always sort of promoted to breathe in through your nose and out through your nose, which isn't always possible if you have nasal problems, I do get that. But if you can, it's just a cleaner way of breathing because the nose collects lots of rubbish from the air that comes in rather than go straight to your chest. So it's always just a little bit better for you to breathe in through your nose if you can. Take one more really nice deep breath here. And lift up. So we're going to come into a bound angle just because we're going to go open a Hindi, um, open our hips. Then we're going to do a Bananasana. <laughs> I love that name. It's very much more of a yin pose than any other pose. So we're going to come first of all into our bound angle our star pose, whatever you want to call it. Lots of names for many, many yoga poses. Um, so if you have to put something underneath your knees to make it a little bit more comfortable, that's fine. We're aiming to try and get our heels as close to our groin as we can. This is a hip opener, so we should feel it here, okay? If you feel more of it sort of on lower back, tuck your bottom right out the way. Those bottom cheeks, those bum cheeks, those glutes. So you're making sure that you're sat on your sit bone so that we're trying to create as nice and straight a spine as we possibly can. So we can hold on to our um, feet or we can just have our arms out for a little bit more wide weight. It's up to you. So this is going to give us a full amount of breath now. We can really focus on the breath. Your belly's got loads of room to move out. And why does it move out? It's because you're pushing your organs out on purpose. So the diaphragm can come down, which aids your breathing. Yeah. If the diaphragm comes down, it gives you room for your lungs to open. So that's why we properly belly breath. You're pushing your organs out to give room for the diaphragm to come down, to open your lungs as big as you can. Yeah. The lungs are huge. They are able to take in a lot of air. Over the last few months, a couple of years now, nearly, we've all probably forgotten how to breathe properly. And we're taking in little breaths and not really using um, the lungs and how they should be used. So we're losing lung function. So you need to make sure you keep that nice deep breath going when you can, if you're at home. Breathing in through your nose, if you can, and out through your nose. So we shouldn't be feeling a forward fold, like a rollover. Or we need to try and make sure our shoulders are relaxed as we channel our mountain pose throughout everything. So our gaze and chest are forward. Our shoulders are relaxed, which is what you would do in your mountain pose. It's your neutral part, sitting on our sit bones. That's keeping us upright. Close our eyes, look off into the distance. Try to keep your mind clear if you can. And there's a really nice fun one next. Bit of a side bend. Taking a really nice deep breath and just lift your knees, bring your knees together and lie down flat. So this is a banana nasana. Oh, my pavletta. So you lie down, you take your legs out to the side. So you walk your legs round to the right. Take your arms above your head and take them round to the right and put yourself into a banana shape. Bananasana, Bananasana, that's it. So this is for our side bend. So I can do it from the front so you can see as well. So we would take our legs, we move them round. So we're keeping everything else flat on the floor 
arms above the head. They come round as well. You're in your side bend. So try not to come up. Try to relax if you can. And if you want a little bit more of a deeper stretch, you can take the leg that's got the, the furthest to bend, lift it up and take it over. So, so if you've turned, uh, if you've bent over to the right, you want to lift your left leg up and pop it over to the right leg. Gives you a bit more of an intense stretch. You can grab your elbows if you want to. Again, a bit more of an intense stretch. Feel that on the side. You should feel that. The side that you're bending to, you should feel that in your obliques. It's like a side crunch. It's a sneaky side crunch. We're not even realizing we're doing, yeah? And then this side where you're getting the lengthen and strengthen muscle from. Come back to your Shavasana. Come back to your corpse pose. Take your legs over to the other side. You bring your arms above your head and you bring them over to the other side. And remember, we can lift that further leg away and put it on top for a deeper stretch. Hands in your ragdoll. Keeping your eyes closed. Creating a nice side bend. So try to keep your shoulders on the floor. Make sure we're flat on the floor. Breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. One more big deep breath here. Bring yourself into your Shavasana, back into your corpse pose. Hands down by your side. Scrunch your face up really tight and let that release all that thinking that you've been doing relax scrunch up your fists and put your arms push them right into the floor and then relax them out to the side pushing those abdominals into the floor squeezing your bottom and then lifting yourself up just a little bit and then as you relax let that belly release let the abdominals go let yourself sink further into the floor Pushing the backs of our legs into the floor, scrunching up our toes, and then release them. And that might turn your legs out a little bit more because you've taken the tension away from the hamstring. Just trying to take the tension away because that bananasana, you do sort of hold it because you're like purposely trying to get further across to the side. So we try and just take away the tension. Keep your eyes closed. Do some really nice slow yogic breaths here. Try to keep your mind closed if you can. Just for a couple more seconds. So these might be your only bits of silence, your only couple of um, moments of silence today. So really enjoy those. Nice deep breath, bring yourself back into your surroundings and slowly sit up. <laughs> sit up onto your sit bones, right up onto your sit bones. We're gonna lift our arms up to the side, all the way fingertips to the ceiling. Bring your hands down to your heart center. And for the last time, I'm going to say namaste to you. Not my last time ever, because that would be a bit sad. Um, I don't want to say that. Don't forget our YouTube channel, which you can watch all of the classes that we do over and over again. Um, and obviously all the other classes that we do. You don't have to just watch mine.